Welcome back to Autism at Home. Time to get those video cameras out, because in this lesson, we'll learn about how to make homemade video models. So, what is a video model? Pretty straightforward, a video that models or shows you how to do something. If you've ever watched a YouTube tutorial on how to fix a leaky pipe at home or how to wrap a present, those are all video models. Here is an example of a video model to teach a child how to perform an action. Show me clapping. Good clapping! Here's another video model teaching a child how to greet someone. Hi, Balkis! Hi, Mommy! Video models are great for children with autism because they're unambiguous, make it really clear who does and says what, and don't usually require a lot of complex language to explain what needs to be done. Trying to explain to a child what they need to do using language alone can sometimes backfire because the child is not sure what you expect of them. Take a look. Hi, Balkis! Hi, Balkis! No, say hi, who? Hi, who? No, say hi, mommy! Say hi, mommy! If you've ever experienced something like this, don't worry, you are not alone. Many children with autism struggle with echolalia, which is repeating back exactly what they heard. A video model shown to them before then should remove the confusion. Here's another example. This time of the adult self-correcting and using a video model. What is this? What is this? Hmm, let's watch a video. Okay, let's try again. What is this? Ball. Ball! Alright, so how do you get started at creating your own video model? First things first, just like social stories, picture your goal. What do you want your child to learn? Then, write a script on who says what. It can be really helpful to write a script first if you find it rather awkward to record yourself. Third, set up the environment. You do not need to have an Instagrammable home to do this. Just find somewhere in the home that is well lit, has a light background, and is as clear as possible of distractions. For the purposes of this video, we'll have a fellow EEP therapist act as mom. Then, get an acting crew. Video models usually need two to three people, especially if it's an interchange between two individuals on camera. Get your family members, friends, or relatives in on it. Video models can be a pretty hilarious activity to do together. Finally, lights, camera, action. Get started recording. Now, you do not need a fancy camera to do this. A phone camera should be more than sufficient. Some things you want to take note of when filming is to ensure whatever the child needs to see is most visible. Make sure the actor's bodies are tilted towards the camera, just like how an actor would stand on stage. If they need to do something at the table or you need the child to see something specific, ensure the key part is most visible. In this case, a hair cutting, the child should clearly see the process of putting on the cape, wetting and cutting the hair. Let's see that final hair cutting video in action. All right, we're gonna cut hair. First, put on cape. Then, we're gonna spray hair. All right, we're going to cut hair. Ready? In three, two, and one. Well done, here you go. So that's it on creating video models. Now, pretend you're a director and have a look at these video models. What could be improved about them? Put on top. On top, good job! What could be improved about the video model? Better lighting, clearer environment, shorter script, or bodies tilted towards the camera? The correct answer is B. The camera is tilted well, 
You can see exactly what the adult is asking the child to do, but there are just way too many things on the table. It can be distracting to a child with autism to focus on the target action if there are other attractive things to look at. Now let's see this one. Show me clapping. Show me sneezing. Achoo. Show me yawning. Show me sleeping. Show me swimming. What could be improved about the video model? If you chose C, shorter script, you're right. This video had great lighting, a clear environment, and the people were very visible. But it is better to break video models into parts, each teaching just one skill. In this case, one action, then trying to lump them all together in a single video. Excuse me. What could be improved about the video model? The answer is D. This video was short and sweet and only involved two steps. Tap someone on the shoulder and say, excuse me. But you can't clearly see what the child should be doing as the actor's bodies are tilted away. Now that you've seen some video models, you've had a go at being director, it's your turn. Following these steps, picture a skill you'd like your child to learn that can be taught using a video model. Once you've created it, try it out with your child prior to practicing the skill. At this point, we have learned how to make three key types of materials for learning. Visuals, social stories, and video models. Keep in mind, all these materials are just tools to aid the learning process by breaking the skill down. Reading a social story alone, no matter how many times, or showing a child a video repeatedly, is not going to be enough to teach a child the skill we want them to show. We must still ensure that they have a strong reinforcement they are willing to work for to learn the new skill, and ensure they get repeated practice, sometimes up to six or seven times a day. In the last lesson, we'll talk about how to track your child's progress so you ensure they are moving along with their learning goals, not too fast, not too slow, and when you can fade off the use of visuals so they can be more spontaneous and independent. We look forward to seeing you in the last lesson. Till then, take care.